I think Debo Samuel has a really unique spot in this 49ers offense, especially going against a team like Kansas City, who might do a lot of different things. The play you see on the screen is a cover three zone, which isn't exactly what the Chiefs love to do. And in fact, feels like uh, the coverage that kind of mostly set up is like a cover two man, but then will blitz or won't blitz. But that's kind of what they set up doing a lot. But they are a team that, especially this season, has played much more zone than they have in years past. They will play zone coverage, and going up against San Francisco, I don't know if they're going to want to play a ton of man coverage, right? Because then you'll have, you know, five players who are in man coverage. One of those is going to be on the running back, but the other four will be on someone else, and you could take them out of the play, right? So I could see a lot of zone coverage being played by Kansas City. Not to mention, you know, uh, Brandon Ayuk is great against man coverage, Uh, you know, uh, obviously George Kittle, great against both man and zone, but there's one guy for San Francisco who really excels against his own coverage, and that's Debo Samuel. And a play like what you see on the screen is exactly what Samuel can do so well. And, and, you know, the Niners do this well in general, but they scheme stuff up for him and he runs these routes so effectively. His route is the one I've circled in white the end of. Uh, You see there's another player running a deep route, which he's the only player on the offense's left that's uh, running a route here. So because of that, the hope is that he can take the corner and safety further deep. Uh, you know, actually, there's a tight end who's going to eventually run a route, but not right away. So, you know, for Samuel, who's going to, you know, go over from the offense's right to the offense's left, that can confuse the players in zone coverage who are lined up towards the offense's left. Watch as when Purdy takes the snap, you see that this scheme works out really well. And while, yes, there was a Seattle player who was covering over the middle who's trying to pick up Debo Samuel, this is a linebacker trying to cover Debo Samuel. It's not working at all. Part of this is without a doubt scheme, which again, you know, in the Super Bowl, who cares why you're getting open? If you're getting open, that's good. But this is also just what Samuel can do. He's so good at these types of routes. On top of this perfect throw from Purdy there, Samuel is able to pick up a big touchdown on that play. This is something that they can bring to the table. And so it really is in many ways for Kansas City, a pick your own poison scenario. And I especially wonder if you see Legereus need on Brandon Ayuk a lot, because Ayuk is kind of their deep shot. Do we then see more targets for Samuel on these over the middle plays? I wouldn't be shocked at all. Like a play like this is an example of that, where this is man coverage, so a little bit different than what we're talking about. But again, if you know, I don't know what the Chiefs are going to do. I really don't know what defense they're going to try and run, which is part of what makes predictions so difficult, right? You don't know exactly what coverages teams are going to do, and they're going to mix it up to some degree, I'm sure. But you have Samuel running a route over the middle. You also have Brandon Ayuk running a uh, you know a, a route on the other side of the field. But you know let's watch Samuel, right? It's a video about Samuel. As you see, when Purdy takes the snap, you know he doesn't go towards Ayuk and instead takes a hit, but is getting the ball to Samuel. And you see how open. Debo is on this play and that's the kind of thing where if Sneed is covering you know uh Ayuk really well well you have so many different options I mean they've been called the Avengers this season right granted it's not Kansas City is you know without good corners but I do think you are you know taking a step down after Sneed and while McDuffie is great he mostly plays in the slot so I am interested in seeing you know what exactly would happen As you see here, ball does get to Samuel, who is able to pick up a first down. So again, these are the kind of things you have to worry about if you're Kansas City. Is I mean, it's it's really difficult to cover someone like him. Going back to the zone coverage aspect, which again is a big part of it, sometimes it's just simple stuff. Stuff like this, right? Where Debo's gonna run a route just underneath the you know zone coverage. That's all he's doing on this play. So you you wouldn't think it'd go for much. It's a third down and five, so okay, maybe you could pick up a first down if things go really well. Well, when this play begins, things aren't really going very well. I mean, again, could you maybe make this throw? You could. Purdy's going to consider running, it feels like. But there's definitely an opportunity to make this throw. You know, it's not the worst idea in the world. But watch how Purdy's going to flip the ball to Samuel. And watch Samuel's move. And he picks up nearly a touchdown. Was actually ruled short. But he got a touchdown on the next play, so it didn't matter. But still, you know, the move that he can make. And that's kind of an an interesting factor. If you're playing zone, again... You're going to get linebackers on Samuel, which like, you know, Kansas City has great linebackers, but it's still, it's a linebacker on Samuel. I don't care if it's Ray Lewis, it's a mismatch, right? And so if you play zone, that's something you're going to have to deal with is, you know, for Kansas City, their linebackers are going to have to be able to make those tackles, right? Like Leo Chanel, you know, Drew Tranquil, uh, you know, uh, obviously Nick Bolton, uh, Willie Gay, those guys are going to have to be able to make the tackles when they have the position, when they're in position to make tackles. And also, of course, stuff like this, just kind of more simple zone busters. But when you have so many different options, right? Ayuk, 
McCaffrey, you can get Samuel in open space where, you know, you see this concept and you see the attention that McCaffrey and Ayuk could take away from, you know, everything else. Watch as when Purdy is going to take the snap right here, you see that he looks over and, I mean, you know, flips it to Debo Samuel. And again, it was so open because of got to cover Christian McCaffrey, got to cover Brandon Ayuk. There's an extra attention guys are going to get, and you can kind of scheme your way into Debo Samuel finding the soft spot in zone. So that's, you know, in, in part the Shanahan scheme and the threat of other guys, but when you're getting Debo Samuel in open space against zone, he's so good at finding lanes and picking up yards after the catch. Look at as when he, you know, uh, powers through, he's going to actually run by Bobby Wagner. Again, another, you know, Hall of Fame linebacker that he's making look, uh, you know, I wouldn't say foolish, but just beating, right? Because that's what he can do. These are the things that putting, you know, playing zone, uh, this is the negative aspect of it. Because at least against, you know, man coverage, even if Debo Samuel is getting open, usually you have someone right in the area who can at least make the tackle right after he makes the catch. In zone, that's not always the case, which is just an added threat. Now, it still might make sense to play a lot of zone given, you know, the other talent that, uh, you know, the 49ers have, but it's just interesting. Going over to something like this is another one where what's going to happen here is so just going to be a, a one of those little push plays like push passes right flip the ball up to Samuel who runs towards the bottom of the screen you see the way this blocking concept could work this is another thing that you better believe we will see the 49ers uh, do you know at times in this game I would assume they do stuff like this. Watch as, you know, Purdy flips the ball to Samuel, who right here, it's actually not going perfectly well. Uh, you know, it's, it's not going horrible or anything, but uh, 89 there for uh, the 49ers. Not doing a perfect job on this, uh, getting up to his block. So Samuel has to move quickly, but move quickly he does. He gets past that part. And even right here, like, I don't know, a good angle. And he's probably getting taken down, like, honestly, right around now. But watch him pick up even more yards. He gets all the way past midfield on a play like that. So really good stuff there by Samuel. And again, these are just the kind of things you're going to have to worry about if you're Kansas City. That being said, you know, I don't know how often they're going to play zone coverage. That's the X factor. But they also have guys who should be able to do a pretty good job, right? Like they have a lot of really talented linebackers who could find ways to make plays. So my final predictions, I am going a plus two Niners. Yes, yet another uh, addition to the Niners. And again, in fairness, I, I've made more videos on Niners skill players than uh, Chiefs players. Like I say in all these, totally not meant to be taken seriously whatsoever. This is just kind of a, uh, you know, a fun way to kind of give a visual representation of the videos I've made so far. But like, obviously, you know, uh, it's, it's, it'd be a horrible way. Like no one should make a prediction based off of this list. It's just a fun thing I do. But yeah, uh, plus two for Debo uh, here. I think that you know, Kansas City should be able to defend pretty well uh, against it, but it's Debo Samuel, so like, just that's a mismatch in general, and schematically, I think it's a mismatch, even if Kansas City actually talent-wise matches up pretty well. I feel like a lot of these videos come down to, it's like, well, the scheme kind of favors San Francisco, but, you know, there will be opportunities for the uh, Chiefs players to just win, and if they can do that, they'd be in a pretty good shape. The issue is a lot easier said than done, but again, they've done it before, so can't count anyone out. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Debo Samuel here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.